Namaskaram. Our topic for the day, supplemental questions. Very relevant topic, very hot topic. A lot of you all are on the brink of sitting down and penning your supplemental answers. I'm going to begin with a story. Please don't run away. Just hear me out. I'm going to keep it very brief. So the story goes like this. My father is very exceptional with directions. There's a running... Uh, compliment in our friends, family and colleague circles that George Vali Varnavartha are nere vandu velladikku which is my mother tongue Malayalam which essentially translates to if George provides directions that person will reach the destination without any doubt and come ring the bell without having to you know, call and check more or ask for more directions which is true, they are absolutely right he is a magician when it comes to directions now why though, what sets him apart? So when everyone sticks to uh, giving a monotonous string, you know, of plain directions like take the third left, take the second right, the fifth exit after the flyover, Papa in turn, what he does is he'll drop in a couple of, you know, snippets of information that will sort of paint a visual picture in the mind of the driver. So he'll add in um, a bakery at the turn or a statue 100 meters before the right turn, or he'd probably say that there's a car showroom on your left before you would spot the board. Now this, what he basically is doing is he's planting identifiers for the driver to have in their mind to reach the destination more smoothly. This is precisely what you should be doing with your supplemental answers as well. Humor me for a few more minutes and let, uh, hear me out. I'll tell you this in three more points, right? Why? Number one. Every time, like just as how the driver is bored and more often confused by the monotonous string of directions, so is your reader, the reader of your application. The reader is as bored and confused as the monotonous string of answers of, you know, great education, great curriculum, great research, great faculty that you would, you know, give for questions like, why do you want to join our school? Number two. Every time the driver reaches two similar looking exits or when the road forks into two, they would look out for the bakery, the statue, the car showroom, that the identifiers that George put in their mind. Similarly, what the school does is when they are, you know, reach a puzzling stage where they have two applications or more applications that have similar capabilities and similar qualifications, they will look out for the identifiers that you have planted in your own application, which would be your personal touch, your personal anecdotes, your stories, and those instances which really makes them feel like you belong in their school and you want a place in their school. Number three, the next time this driver is you know, going to visit George, it's very unlikely that they will forget the way. Why? Because they associate those three identifiers, the bakery, the statue, the car showroom with George. The next time they see the statue, they will remember George. Similarly with your application, they will associate those identifiers that you've planted in your application with you. They will remember you because of those instances. They will remember you because of your heartfelt connection that you portray in your application. It will completely change the scope of your application and will make a really big impact. So moral of this story is be sure that you identify you plant identifiers in your application something that they can point at in their you know visual memory and say how oh, this is what Flynn wants or you know that instance was written by Flynn you know I remember her from the application or from the list of applicants make sure you do that now that was the why right like why is it important that you keep your application very specific to you very effective and put in as much as effort to your supplementals as much as you would to your other application documents. The second part that I'm going to talk about now is how. How can you possibly make this effective? I'm going to give you two insights here. So number one would be, the first step would be, an observation that I've made with our mentees is that they often come to me and ask, Flynn, uh, so I'm going to take the example of the question, why do you want to join our school? Okay, so they would often come and ask me, Flynn, uh, should I? Is it okay to mention this point for this question? Uh, you know, so and so point, and then that's how they would trail off. But I would strongly advise against this. The reason being, I don't want you to limit your thinking in the beginning. Don't filter yourself. Let that happen in the end, right? Because the more you filter yourself in the beginning, the more you limit your thinking. You're leaning towards a more perfected, plastered answer that you think the school is expecting from you but there's nothing of that sort right 
So in the beginning, just dump all of your thoughts on a uh, notepad, virtual or real. And then, uh, you know, go over it and make a final decision as to what has to be a part of your answer. And make sure that you also include uh, light-hearted uh, reasons, like uh, say for instance, why um, you would want to study in a happy, peaceful and calm environment like Loma Linda, the place Loma Linda, because that is the kind of environment you want to try in, study in, at, study in or study at and make a difference. Because often we tend to forget how far light-hearted answers and conversations can go. So don't forget that. Tip number two would be the real ideas should always come from you. So even if you're taking uh, professional assistance uh, to pen your answer, remember that the substance, the essence, uh, the identifiers, right? The bakery, the statue and the car showroom of your answer should come from you. Because uh, there's no way any other person will be able to match your profile with the school and tell them why you belong there. And this is the biggest foolproof method to connect with the school and to connect with the reader and to make them believe that you belong there. So make sure you do that. Make sure you put in those uh, that extra one hour or that extra two hours to research about the school and to find out what really, you know, you resonate with or what you really connect with and how you belong there. So that connect you need to create and you need to find out and you need to incorporate into your answers. Do not give in to the March Madness. All of you all who are worried, you're still in a good time. Uh, you, March is not even over. You have this month, you have the next month. April is also still a sweet spot. You'd, um, you know, just keep an eye on the time. And make sure that you don't lose track of it, but just keep going step by step, read through it, and you'll be good. All right, thank you for listening to me. My three to five cents is I'm done for the day. Uh, I hope you found this helpful, and if you found it helpful, share this with your friends, foster healthy competition, and help out the ones who are looking out for information. And if you like it, please share, like, subscribe, comment if you have any questions, and I'll see you soon with some more information that might be helpful to you. Bye-bye.